Hey, what's up world? This is Eric. Uh, today, I just want to tell you guys about a new thing I went out and purchased yesterday. It is the Trek Marlin 7. Uh, it cost about, about a buck, about a grand or so. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool bike. Um, at this point, uh, I'm going to try something and you know, hold, hold off here. Everybody that's an e-biker, this may be a little bit crazy, but uh, I'm going to try to ride this non-motorized on a tour to Tucson here uh, probably November um, and back. I uh, should be a little over, I don't know, about 300, 350 miles. I'm going to be taking one of the side highways, not I-10, but uh, yeah, I, I decided that I would, I would give that a try. I, I've never done a bike tour without an e-bike on it and just wondering in my mind, can I actually do it? So. I'm going to probably use uh, October to train back up. I've been kind of lazy for a month. I was uh, editing videos, getting things uh, basically caught back up around the house and kind of lost my training a little bit. But yeah, I got did my first ride yesterday. Um, did about 15 miles. Um, unfortunately, it's got a real sporty seat on it here, right here. Um, but that thing, after five miles, my butt is more sore than after riding 400 and, or sorry, 540, 43 miles. So, first things first, the seat has, has, has to change out on this thing. So, luckily bikes are pretty easy nowadays. You got just a simple little quick release. So, I'm going to just take the post out, change it off from my old seat. What you can see here is a much, much wider seat. It's got the cushion in it. This basically allows me to wear normal shorts. I'm not really up for the uh, the biker shorts with the pads in them. Um, they look kind of silly. Sorry, anybody that wears them. And then I know you guys have to then shove chamois cream down in your pants. That, that just sounds even worse. I, I've never even tried these things, and nor do I want to. So to avoid all this, I ride with a padded seat. And this doesn't matter e-bike or not. Um, the seat right here, it, it falls apart after, you know, about a, probably about a thousand miles, but it keeps me from having to wear any of those ridiculous looking shorts. The tightness is, okay, that's one thing, aerodynamics, but the pad in the butt just looks stupid. So, first things first is I'm going to take off the cool looking seat and put on the grandpa seat. So, in a snap. Alright, so it doesn't look as cool, but, hey. You know, my butt not being sore is totally worth having a padded seat up there. I love that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do real quick is, of course, put on a water bottle holder. I actually got a couple new ones coming on the way, but I'm going to be riding this in training, so I need definitely need water. So get that on real quick. Okay, and now I can put water on. I'll probably end up putting a second one there, but I end up having to break break one of them. I was trying to readjust how it mounts. Um, I think the way water bottles are holders are made i'm only gonna be able to fit a 20 ounce there but that'll be able to work uh any, any little extra bit of water i can carry is definitely awesome not not too sure if that'll be the touring setup but i definitely want to for going around the city and then the other problem i might end up having is off the hand grips they um they had to hurt my palm right here after a while definitely noticed when i was shopping today as I was holding the cart, I'm gonna let my hands are a little bit bruised. So, what I do with that is I end up going with oh, I'm taking out a blast, I got a little bit of a glare there. What I end up doing is I end up putting on these flat ones, like here. Uh, these are much better. Your palm ends up rusting more. Oh, that's the wrong one, but anyways, your palm ends up rusting on the end of that, save you a lot of uh, aches and pains in the end. I'm gonna change those out real quick. All right, and that is I already can tell that is much better. Just give you guys a quick overview of the uh, Truck Marlin 7. So you got the 7 on, up on there. Marlin, ah, my new, new squishy grandpa seat. That's, that's good. <laughs> Anyways, it's got this uh, big big dinner plate cassette on the back. Uh, this thing is this is nice. I believe it goes up to a 46 teeth, which is pretty cool. Of course, I already removed the uh, reflectors from their wheels. Uh, those things end up making noise, so I end up pulling them off. Uh, not a big fan of them. I wish it would uh, have. <clears throat> well, I actually have some reflective tape if I wanted to put on the rim. But it's got uh, hydraulic brakes on it. Back on this bag, it's got the 160 rotor hydraulic. And then 
here on the front it's got a 180 rotor which is really nice for greater stopping power um, I'm gonna try these out for a while they're both uh, pure pure hydraulics unlike my last ones were mechanical hydraulics meaning they had a cable going down to the thing and then it pulled on the hydraulics these are these are pure uh, mineral oil all the way up but yeah nice clean design to it um, it's only a one by which if you watch my last touring video kind of started to hate the front derailleur if I ever do convert this into the BBS HD uh, Bifang motor, this is already perfect because, well, the Bifang motor is a one by. So I, I kind of like the simplicity of being able to shift just on one on one side and not having to toggle back and forth to be able to step up through the gears. I don't know, maybe it's just me or personal preference. And it's got the, uh, on this side, of course, these ones aren't even being used, but on the other side they are. It's got the internal cable routing, which that's that's pretty cool i like that i guess unless you have to shift manually where you want to pull on the cable or something but that's a whole different story there i guess you could try to do that more up at uh this end but uh that's only in a failure moment if it, like once again if you watch my last tour video you'd you'd definitely understand what i was talking about i had to pull the cable here to be able to shift on i think I believe it was day three all right that's all i got from amazon right now um waiting on some new tires i'm gonna go for some slicks of course these are more for uh, off-roading and then i'm gonna drop them these are 2.2 i'm gonna drop down to uh two inch it was as small as thin as i could actually find for that uh online but um yeah i'm probably uh, gonna add a rack and onto the back but that'll only be added on when I'm actually touring, because, well, I won't need it otherwise. Even probably with my drone, I'd probably just throw my drone into my backpack and have it on my back, especially being winter time now. I'm not, not worried about it making my back sweaty or anything. This is, uh, well, here in Phoenix, this is paradise time. Uh, the rest of the year was all kind of hell, and now, now it's very, very nice. But, yeah, that, that that's my idea. I don't know. Let me know, guys. Is, is this a crazy idea going from an e-bike tourist and actually trying to do a regular tour? I don't know. I just just want to try it once. I want to, I want to see how it goes. I, I already did my 10 mile uh, training ride yesterday. Um, usually it takes me around 43 minutes. This took me about, on this bike, took me about 55 minutes. So that's e-bike versus non-e-bike. But yeah, I think it should be good, a good experience. Um, even if I'm traveling 10 miles per hour, I have all day at point I, I don't have no no uh, place that i need to plug into i'm um, probably gonna end up making it like a three or four day trip uh probably gonna ride in camp camp in the middle of the desert in between here and tucson and then we'll do the rest of the ride and then maybe on the way back i'll try to do the 153 miles all in one jump i don't know maybe two kind of kind of just do these things as as it feels so anyways try to have a good day